Second to last OTAs are in the books. Let's talk about it. What is going on guys? What is going on 27 squad? Welcome back into another video. I apologize for the late upload again. Just a tough day at work. It's probably going to be like that tomorrow for the last OTAs as well. Um, as I'm, I'm training a new trainee and you know, those type of days are longer than usual. So <laughs> that being said, let's get started. Today, the Giants focused on the red zone and those are the type of practices where you're going to see a lot of highlights. Obviously, they're closer to the end zone. So a lot of those catches really matter because they they mean touchdowns and man there were a lot of touchdowns today on seven on seven and 11 on 11 let's start with daniel jones and and going through his progress as he works back up to eventually work on 11 on 11s and back to full form as he was on seven on sevens where he threw a couple of touchdown passes to jalen hyatt one to malik neighbors that says that he completed five of six passes four of which were touchdowns and they were all consecutive four consecutive touchdowns and the fifth completion he threw was just a hair short of the goal line for Wandale Robinson. Says Jones' first touchdown pass went to Jalen Hyatt after Jones rolled to his left to extend the play. Hyatt was covered initially but made a subtle move to create space late and come up with the touchdown catch. Jones' second touchdown went to Malik Neighbors who did a good job coming back to the ball on a pass over the middle. Hyatt caught his second touchdown of the period running across the field just in front of the back line of the end zone. Jones started the play looking to his left when he found no one open. He quickly got his head around the opposite side of the field and found Hyatt on time with a pinpoint bullet for a touchdown. Jones's next completion came on a quick stop route to Wandale Robinson over the middle just short of the goal line that might have gone for a touchdown if Robinson was able to turn upfield after the catch. Jones's final completion of the period also went to Robinson who made a slick second move after his initial route was covered to create separation and give Jones a window for his fourth touchdown. Now moving on to 11 on 11s, as you guys know, like I said, Jones not working on 11 on 11. So when you see Drew Locke out there, he is working with the first team. And Drew Locke seems to be adjusting pretty well to the first team defense and getting good chemistry with the first team offense because he started out really, uh, I don't want to say bad because he's, the, he's on the first team. I, he's just struggled a lot playing with the first team offense, but now he's starting to pick it up a bit as he completed nine of 10 passes. And I believe they were all co consecutive. If I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong about that, but uh, he completed nine of 10 passes, including two highlight touchdowns to Malik neighbors. You saw that one flowing all over Twitter where Malik neighbors has absolutely made an incredible catch on the left sideline and it kind of made a like an awkward adjustment to it but got up there and caught the ball in, in an acrobatic fashion. Malik Neighbors definitely showing that he is going to be a absolute threat wherever he's lined up and however you give him the ball he is going to make a play. Jalen Hyatt even alluded to that uh, during his press conference. Uh, I'll just say just uh, how explosive he is uh, at his weight, um, the way he catches the ball, uh, the, what he does after the catch, um, the run after catch, you know, all of that's elite. And, um, you know, when you bring that to us and to the Giants and with Coach Daves, uh, you know, we, we can do a lot of things with him and uh, put him everywhere. You know, that's one thing about him. You can put him everywhere, outside, inside, slot, uh, running back, whatever you want to do. Um, that's, that's the type of receiver he is. And, you know, we're going to make sure we get the ball to him. Locke's second touchdown pass to neighbors was even more impressive. Off a play action pass, Locke moved to his left with a flick of the wrist lofted a pass to the back of the end zone neighbors was running along back of the end zone and had to stretch out to come down with an acrobatic catch neighbors got his feet down on both plays showing excellent awareness Locke was on fire as he not only did he hit Jalen Hyatt and Malik neighbors he also got Isaiah Hodgins involved for a touchdown and likely would have gotten Robinson for a potential score as well. Moving on to touchdown, Tommy, he threw a touchdown pass to Allen Robinson. Nathan Rourke also connected with Lawrence Cager and John Giles for touchdowns as well. So we've got touchdowns everywhere from every single quarterback. They're throwing touchdowns and it's the red zone. So I expect as much. Now the offense was clean again for the second straight day. The defense, surprisingly so, working in the red zone, were not able to force any turnovers. However, we do have some batted down passes coming from Dane Belton and Jason Pinnock, who both knocked passes away. These are presumably our starting safeties right now. So this, this is the type of production we want to see. We want to see these safeties producing and knocking down passes, getting interceptions, because if there's one part of that 
of that defense that does worry me it is the safeties Jalen Mills also forced a batted pass we'll see if he winds up making the roster but he seems like he's having a decent camp so far and Jordan Riley who we haven't heard of all the way up to this point got a batted down pass at the line of scrimmage we got some info on Tyrone Tracy as we haven't heard too much of him. We've heard him in bits and pieces in, in some of these articles where they kind of noted that Tyrone Tracy had a good practice. Tyrone Tracy had a good catch, had a good run. This is probably the most we're hearing about Tyrone Tracy in one article. Seems like Locke got all the offensive rookies involved that we drafted where he got neighbors for a couple touchdown grabs. He had uh, Theo Johnson make a couple of good catches as well. And then he got Tyrone Tracy involved, finding him in the flat where Tyrone Tracy had to make a adjustment to the ball and made a pretty nice catch. This is what Dabo said about Tyrone Tracy. He says, Tracy's been good. I wouldn't say a surprise later round draft pick, but he's done a good job in this camp of picking up the information pretty quickly. Now, I really don't know what that really means. He's saying, I wouldn't say a surprise later round draft pick. I guess he's just kind of trying to say that he's not all of a sudden like one like a st starting running back or anything, anything like that. He still has much to learn, but he's picking up on things quickly as I thought he would because he's been thrown around uh, in different ways in college where he was playing receiver running back he was used on a lot of like misdirection plays trick plays and he was kind of just used as an offensive weapon all the way up to the NFL so I would figure that he is going to adjust at anything you really put him at and especially with the new running backs coach Joel Thomas who worked in New, in new Orleans where they really prioritize the running back catching the ball out the backfield I really think Tyrone Tracy has a real good opportunity to do something in his rookie year and seasons past that. We have a couple of defenders who stood out here. Kayvon Thibodeau got in the backfield a couple of times, forcing a lot of pressure. That's what we want to see. And Boogie Basham, who I didn't even think, like, I, he was kind of a second thought. I really didn't, you know, think about Boogie Basham when talking about this defensive unit. But here he is in multiple multiple articles where he's saying that he's forcing a lot of pressure and getting a lot of would-be sack could have had two sacks today Zizo Jalari also making some noise I'm anxious to see how they're going to use him if he's going to be healthy he's going to be a great rotational piece you know obviously you have Kayvon out there and Brian Burns and then having Ojalari out there let's not forget Ojalari his amount of sacks that he has compared to the amount of games he started is absolutely like pretty damn good pretty damn impressive he's been productive when he's on the field the only problem is he's not on the field enough so if we can get a healthy season out of out of Aziz Ojolari I think he's still going to be the third defensive end or third outside linebacker edge rusher uh, off the edge but he's going to be a damn good swing edge rusher and Dexter Lawrence did a really good job in the run game as well now the streak has been broken guys it was an 8 OTA streak where Deontay Banks was mentioned. I didn't hear anything about Deontay Banks. I was really excited. I was going through these articles, reading up on things, and hoping that we got a, like an intercession from Deontay Banks, a couple of batted passes, because they're in the red zone, right? This is where defenders, especially the, the uh, defensive backs, really shine, right? They play press coverage, they get tight, you know, they're a nuisance to the wide receivers, giving, not giving them a lot of space and forcing in incomplete passes. We really didn't see that from the cornerbacks today. We're really seeing a lot of action from the safeties where you got, you know, Tyler Newbin out there. He made some plays. Dane Belton, Jalen Mills, uh, you know, Jason Pinnock. All of the safeties really did something um, that that we know of. All the safeties, uh, and, and even Trey Hawkins, the, the cornerback, uh had, had a couple batted passes. We didn't hear anything from Deontay Banks or Cordell Flott. So I'm just going to assume that either they didn't throw their way or they got dotted on. I don't know. But that's all the news, guys. Let me your thoughts in the comment section below. We will be back here tomorrow, hopefully not as late, tomorrow for the last OTA practice and we're moving on to minicamp. That being said, guys, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Leave a like if you guys enjoyed. Subscribe if you guys are new to the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Woo!